Okay, so in this video, we're going to show you about LogSec. I'm going to give you sort of a whirlwind tour of I like it and how I use it. And this is not a tutorial by any stretch of the imagination. I've just been having some series of problems with uh, the way that I've been taking notes. And one of the biggest problems is I just don't go back to my previous notes. And so this tool is a sort of an experiment that, I, that I'm falling in love with on how to take notes in a very different way. It's just a radically different way of thinking about notes altogether. So in this video, we're going to dive right into that and uh, I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. So let's jump into it. All right. So if you go to their website and you actually kind of do a review on the tool itself, you'll see, so by the way, that's L O G S E C dot com. So when you go there and you do sort of a review, you'll see it's for like academic students task manager, PDF notation, flashcards, etc. And if I gotta be honest, like it, it, this doesn't, this website doesn't actually do justice to how good this tool is and what it's, what it's used for. And they're now building out a com, com, um, community hub, etc. They got some documentation, etc. I have just been just winging it and trying to figure out like how to use the tool effectively. Um, their, their competitor, by the way, is Obsidian, BS, uh, e d i a n notes. I have no idea how to spell it. Okay, there we go. By the way, I have dyslexia. By the way, so I struggle with spelling. Yeah. So their their competitor is Obsidian, and I'm no expert at, at this tool because I don't have a I, I haven't used it enough to 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 have a good opinion. However, I've watched a few videos on it, and and people have raved by this tool, and it's actually really good as well too. I think the biggest difference is that on this tool here, it's more like you create sort of like your categories and you you um, you put your notes in the middle, right? Like just description, etc. It's closer to, it's I would say it's a modern version of OneNote, right? Because on, the, on the OneNote, let me see if I can make this happen. I got one of my screens are off, so I can't actually see my screen. Okay, you know what? I forget about that because I, my OneNote is open, but I can't get access to it. It's driving me nuts. And the shortcut command to move. Oh, there we go. Yeah. By the way, if you ever have that problem, it's uh, Alt. Th uh, this is for Windows people, obviously. Alt, Alt, Space, M. So Alt, Space is going to get you that menu. And then you press M, which is going to get you down to this list here. And, uh, and then it's going to put you to move and then you could just use your arrow keys and just move that around. Um, so if you have a, a double screen and for whatever reason your window is not coming across or showing, you could do that and drag it across. So anyway, I digress. So I'll, I'll just, right. So Obsidian is closer to this where you could kind of organize. See, I got like years of notebooks and basically they're just kind of organized by, by topics and, and stuff like that. And you kind of fill things out, but it's a significantly more advanced tool. However, LogSeq is different. It, it truly is different because it doesn't force you to do this organization. This is what I'm actually getting away from. And now that my brain is sort of on it, it's just, it feels more natural to me, right? No, I like organization, but I also don't, one of my problems is I don't necessarily go back into the notes, if that makes sense. So, so what LogSeq does, and I've kind of ranted and take up a whole bunch of your time, is it just every day, you open up the tool and it just gives you this, which I appreciate very much because it just gives you a date. It's like, hey man, what are we doing today? And then that's it. It's your job to put stuff. However, it's not paragraph style stuff. It's just lists, just lists, okay? Just lists. So what do I have to do today? Oh, I'm gonna review my Facebook campaign. Um, I have to discuss a print um, brochure. I know people are still printing brochures. That's right. Brochures and business card. Right. I have to um, okay. So just lists. Okay. Now let's just say for a uh, Facebook campaign. Right, so it just allows you to get things off your head right off the top, which I really appreciate. Then you could just come in here, press tab again. Now, 
and I could say now, okay, for this review campaign, let it ads, right? Yes, new creative, right? You can just go on on, you get the idea, right? So, so that's kind of like the general basics of it. Now, where it gets interesting is, let's say this is a this is a heading. This is going to be for Facebook. I'm probably going to do something with Facebook again in the future. What I can do is just just do angle brackets, angle brackets, Facebook. Okay, and what that does is it makes it a link. See that? Now, when I press the delete to bring that back up, what I could do is take these three, just these three, have it in. So now this becomes a subheading underneath this. And that's where the power of this tool comes in. Because you just keep wrapping list under list, but it, it's, it, it's ever expanding. And in doing so, eventually you start building up these, what I, what I consider small micro lists. But then eventually you have this system where you have these lists, 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 but then they're all connected and then you could go back and see all of the lists, for example. So let me give you some example to make it more concrete, right? So there's two things that I have. I have Snapsuite sales, I have Snapsuite marketing, and I have Snapsuite, right? This is just my, my other company. And and so if I do, if I click on Snapsuite, it literally just group all of the stuff that I did for every single day, for all of the time, whatever it is that I wrote down for that particular company, it just, it just basically just groups it. And it, it's just a really interesting way to organize your content. So no longer do you have to like pre-organize these folders and pre-organize, you know, and again, I, I'm a diehard uh, OneNote fan. I've been using OneNote since 2008. This, this doesn't have all my notebooks, but it just goes back. It literally goes back to 2008. And this has been my default all along. However, I find that I'm, what I'm struggling with is every year I create a new notebook because there's some performance issues, etc., etc., And so it allows me to kind of break things up accordingly. However, um, every year, the structure of my notebooks are different. So, you know, today I was quoting snippets, next year I have, right? It's just, and, and what's happening is because of this, inconsistency between year to year to year when I want to revert back to some information in the past what I what end up happening is I, I kind of struggle with it because I don't it's like okay which first of all which year did I have that information I know that I have the information because I, I'm very good at remembering snippets of data but so I know that I have the information or the knowledge somewhere in the back of my head. I just can't find it, so I need to go back to my notes. But now the question is, well, which year did you re did you learn that information? So then that becomes a struggle of like, oh no, not in this notebook. No, not in this notebook. No, not in this. No right? Like that's that's what I'm trying to solve. And I haven't been able to find a tool that does that. In fact, to be honest, I didn't even I knew I had the problem. I just didn't know how bad of a problem it was until this logsec tool uh, came around, right? So it goes it goes for other stuff too. So for example, Snapsuite marketing, right? Do that, and then these are all the stuff that I've been just just randomly recording about market. I know if you notice, I got screenshots in there, right? I got see if there's any video. No, I keep going down. There's videos in here somewhere, but actually, let me go back to this because I'm sure I recorded some videos. Yeah, yeah. So if you paste the YouTube video. It shows up like this. If you you can you can take screenshots, standard screenshots, right, and just just drop them in. But here's what's crazy about it. Here's what's crazy about it. All of this stuff, it just sits locally on your computer, and you have to be very organized about this part specifically. It's not the best for this one. I'll, I'll be honest with that. It's just I'm not saying that it's you know all you know flowers and roses. So that's not what I'm trying to find for you. I'm trying to get to you right my so here so I have an underscore notes right so what I've done is basically just created the note thing and then it what it does on your computer is that it creates this it creates assets which are actually just all of the screenshots so the cool thing is that you could uh, see the, the thing with one note is that whenever you paste a screenshot or something like that inside of there you, you it's it's in there it's like it's just sucked in However, here, when you paste a screenshot, it's actually just organized on your computer into these folders called assets. And not all of the pages 
The pages, by the way, are those in that, that link thing that I showed you. So actually, that's not true. These are pages here, which is slightly, slightly a little different. It, it creates its own pages. But here, if you go back to, I'm trying to figure out which one it is. Somewhere, somewhere. Journals, journals, journals. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, here. All it is, is just a bunch of text files that is created on the phone. I could open up any one of these. Hopefully, there's no private information inside. And it's going to open it up in, 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 in Notepad. Oh, of course, on the other screen. Oh. Alt space M. Guys, remember that command. It's, it's important. It's important for my sanity. See that? Enter. And then that'll stop it from get back your mouse to regular. So, yeah. So, see that? It's, it's just text. That's all it's doing. And it's smart enough to take this text, organize it, and then put it into this into this format. So, so not that you really care about, maybe you do, maybe you don't care about like owning your own data, but this, this is a format that can work, right? Cause I actually, unless I, if I stop using OneNote, I don't have access to this information, but I could stop using this tool and still have access to my information, which I think is, it's important. It's important, right? So yeah, like I said, this is not a tutorial. It's just sort of a whirlwind view. Now here's what's cool about it. If I go to flashcards, no, if I go to graph view, it shows you this and I don't know what to do with this yet. I don't know what to do with it other than it's cool. Um, so right now it's just clustering a bunch of dates together, but it's also clustering information. You see, for example, like this, that's a snap suite marketing that I was just on just now. Right. But See, if I, I could kind of zoom into it, it's like SnapSuite marketing and there's some dates that are kind of clustered that are related. And I'm not certain what to do with this other than it looks cool. And this is PC Solutions and see out here, I got some fringe, <laughs> some fringe ideas, I guess. And yeah, GitHub. So so the point is that you, you, you other than the dates, you should be like writing stuff, but it's, it's helping you to kind of do something or like cluster information. And I guess in the future, I could be able to kind of figure out where my attention is being spent because it kind of looks like a brain, doesn't it? Right? It's like newer, the neurons in my brain, if, that, if that's the right word. So yeah, now there is a whiteboard, which I kind of use sometimes. I don't necessarily use it as much. And uh, yeah, I, I sort of use it. I don't use it as much, to be honest with you. I actually prefer the Microsoft whiteboard for only one specific reason. It's clunkier and slower. I'm digressing a little bit here, but I prefer the Microsoft whiteboard for only one reason. And that's because the, it, the pens, the pencils are very, are visible all the time, which, which I appreciate. So that's the reason why I don't use this, but, but it's great. It's actually, it's a perfectly fine thing. You could use this here. You could color, you could do whatever. It, like it's nothing wrong with it. I just find that when I'm like doing a whiteboard, I'm in a very specific mindset and I don't want to go clicking on these tools to find stuff. I just want to click on Kind of move forward. There's flashcard. I never use this. And yeah, like I mentioned the graph overview. And then there's these pages. So the pages just kind of organize your get your content. Obviously I'm not as, as organized, but it, it helps you to I think you can create pages. I'm not really hundred percent certain oh, that way. Each one of these things are pages like those angle brackets that I create as a page, but there's some sort of correlation that I haven't necessarily figured out as yet. But anyway, that's all I wanted to share in this video. Hopefully you gotten some value out of it, maybe not, but yeah, if you do, please subscribe. Thanks. All right.